Hey everyone, it's Hannah. So first off, really quick before we start this video, I am so annoyed because this is supposed to be like um, anti-glare or whatever glasses. Look at that. That's so annoying to me. I don't know. It's like, mm. so I'm sorry if that's annoying because it annoys me. Anyways, to get on with the video, um, today I'm going to be doing a different video. I've never really done anything like before, and it might not be for everyone. Um, studying animals is something I've recently liked to do. I mean, I've always really loved animals. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a veterinarian. Now, I kind of want to, I don't want to be a vet necessarily. I definitely want to do something with animals, but... Not quite sure yet, but I am just in love with animals, so I thought today I would talk to you guys about some cool facts about some cool animals, and yeah. So if you do get bored throughout this video, which I would completely understand, please at least watch the end of this video. I'm not really sure exactly where it will be in the video, I'll put it in the description, but Please listen to the ending. I'm going to talk about an animal called the slow loris, which I think is something that needs to be talked about. Not many people know what the problem is. Not many people have even heard of what a slow loris is. So please stay tuned for that. Okay, let's get on with the video. So I'm actually going to start by reading this quote from a book I've been reading called Beyond Words, What Animals Think and Feel by Carl Safina. This book is so good. I'm only on page like 20... 26 but it's already like amazing so you should check it out okay so I don't really know why I like this quote but I really do and I think it's a good way to start this video so yeah so this is what Carl Safina says we say humans and animals as though life falls into just two categories us and all of them yet we've trained elephants to haul logs from forests in laboratories we've run rats through mazes to study learning let pigeons tap targets to teach us psychology 101 we study flies to learn how our dna works give monkeys infectious diseases to develop cures for humans in our homes and cities dogs have become the guiding protectors for humans who see only by the light of their four-legged companions eyes throughout all this intimacy we maintain a certain insecure insistence that animals are not like us though we are animals can any relationship be more fundamentally miscomprehended? Yeah, that's the quote, and I think it's just really eye-opening, I guess. I know it sounds kind of dumb if you're not really into animals the way I am, but yeah. Throughout this video, I'm going to be putting little clips of habitats of some of the animals because on this app called World Wildlife Fund Together, it has a little option where you can turn your phone and see what the perspective of the animal would be. So I'll put little clips of that there if the option is available for that animal. And yeah, so I'm going to start off by talking about gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees. So just some random facts. I hope you guys enjoy it. So gorillas are actually very critically endangered. Their population has decreased 60% in the last 25 years, which is really scary. It's mainly like the habitat loss and illegal trading with gorillas. Um, actually, their body parts are very often used in traditional medicines. Ooh, ooh, that just makes me... Mm. Now some facts about the gorilla. Um, so the average height is about 6 feet and the average weight is 400 pounds. I'm going to read this paragraph I found. I will link all the um, information sources down below. Um, it says, Gorillas do go into defense mode when they feel uneasy. Similar to humans, gorillas don't attack unless provoked. For gorillas, triggers include being surprised or threatened, especially when it comes to their family. The typical response of a male silverback to a threat is making bluff charges by beating on their chests, aggressive sounds, or running up to their target quickly, then stopping a few feet away. In this situation, the best response is to crouch down, look away, and act casual. They'll see you as non-threatening and move on. So something I wanted to talk about is why people, I don't know, are so scared of gorillas. I mean, obviously we should be scared because if you provoke them like any other human, they're gonna get mad. And I think the reason people are so scared of gorillas 
I think people make gorillas out to be such horrible monsters is because they're scared of them because they're so much like us. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious whether you believe in evolution or however you believe that the earth was created. Me personally, I'm a Christian, so I think God created animals and humans separately. But it's obvious that gorillas are very much like us from their structure and their behavior. Um, people tend to have this thought in their mind that animals just aren't as smart as us. Even people who like like animals, they love their pets and all that, they just think have this thought in the back of their mind that animals are not very smart, they're not like us. And I think that's the problem with the whole gor gorilla situation. Um, people don't like that gorillas act the way we do. I mean, a gorilla's not gonna attack you if you're not messing with its family or with it or you're all up in their home. I mean, think about if someone you didn't know came into your house, um, you'd be a little upset if they didn't leave, if they started taking pictures of you or you know, provoking you in any way, some of us would be pretty angry, maybe attack. And obviously that's what a gorilla will do, and I don't think that that should be so surprising that a gorilla is going to attack you if you are bothering it. I mean, that's what we do, and I don't think that people like to think of animals and humans on the same level, which in some circumstances we should. Yeah, that's my little rant of the day on gorillas. <laughs> Next, my favorite animal is the orangutan. So they are also critically endangered. They have been declining 50% in the last 60 years. So not as bad as gorillas, but still very bad. So I'm just going to read some facts about the orangutan. Their average lifespan is actually 50 years. Pretty good. Um, their name actually means um, man of the forest which is kind of cool, I think. Um, so, an average day for an orangutan, they look for food like fruits, leaves, and honey, or sometimes small lizards and birds. Um, at night, it sleeps It sleeps on this like platform that they make by weaving branches together, which is kind of cool. Um, actually, most apes walk on their knuckles like gorillas. They like put their hand... That looks really weird. <laughs> They put their hands, like, their knuckles out, and they walk on the knuckles. Um, the orangutan is one of the only, if not the only, I'll have to check on that, um, apes that walk on their palms, because their knuckles just weren't made for walking on. So, interesting little fact. Um, they obviously have opposable thumbs, and they have opposable big toes. One third of orangutans don't have toenails on their big toes. I don't know how that works, but it's kind of funny to me. So, another kind of sad fact about the orangutan, normally in the wild, they give birth at age 15 to 16, but when they're bred in captivity, they are normally bred at age 8, which is scary and sad and um, frustrating that it has to be like that. I have been in a weird situation about my feelings with zoos. I love seeing when it says, like, this animal has been rescued and it couldn't, like, live anywhere else. I think that's amazing. But when they keep breeding in captivity, they're just... There's no need for that. Like, I don't understand. Just for the money and for people to come see and stare at. And I know it sounds hypocritical for me because I love zoos. Or I did before I, you know, started really getting into animals and stuff. Every generation of these animals are just going to keep growing up in captivity. And that's really sad. Instead of just rescuing the ones that need to be rescued and letting the ones in the wild live peacefully in the wild and let them breed naturally instead of, you know, forcing them to in the zoos. Yeah. So the next animal I'm going to talk about is the elephant. Elephants are so 
beautiful, also very smart creatures. And they have a lot of cool things about them. Um, I'm going to put their little habitat thing here because I know there's one for them. So, I'm just going to say some random facts. And it'll probably be really awkward because, you know, me. Female elephants are called cows and their cats are called babies. <laughs> their babies are called calves. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, not only the mother looks after the calf, it's the whole entire family. A typical elephant family consists of like 6 to 12 elephants. And the females kind of take care of each and everyone's young while the guys go hang out somewhere. So for elephants, the extinction risk varies. Um, the African elephant, which is probably what you see in the zoos, sadly, and kind of like you see the most pictures of and stuff. They are only vulnerable. They're getting close to being endangered, but they're not quite there yet. There are 470,000 of them in the wild, estimated. Um, the Samaritan elephant is critically endangered with only 2,400 left in the whole world. Obviously with the endangerment and stuff, it's mostly the ivory trade, which was banned in 1989, but is still done illegally all the time. <sighs> which is really, really depressing. Sad. Woo, fun videos. Okay, so the next animal that I have. A turtle. So specifically, I'm going to talk about the green turtle. Um, this is the turtle you see in most pictures. You know, like the underwater cool sea pictures. I'll put some here. That's the green turtle. So their lifespan is about 100 years old, which is sick, awesome, crazy, cool. However, they are very, very critically endangered. Fishing gear accidentally catches and drowns hundreds of thousands of these turtles each year, um, which is called bycatching. Um, really scary that, um, you know, people don't mean to do it, and then turtles little swimming by, and then it gets caught in the net, and... Mm. <laughs> so, the green turtle's diet is seaweed and algae, jellyfish, mollusks, snail, worms, and sponges, and they are located worldwide. So, having been hunted for centuries for their meat and eggs, green turtles are now legally protected. Special breeding beaches have been set up by conservationists to help save them from extinction. Woo! Their little habitat thing here. Pretty cool. Tigers are so cool. Um, let's see. Um, you may not know this. I mean, you probably know that they're endangered, but they are very, very critically endangered. Um, only 3,900 left in the wild. That's not a lot. Like, at all. Um, whew, yeah. They have lost 93% of their habitat due to deforestation. That's a lot of their habitat. So yeah, the World Wildlife Fund says they are at high risk for extinction. Like, a tiger. Like, the tiger could be extinct soon. Um, I have their habitat thing here. Um, let's read more about tigers. So, tigers, they only have an average lifespan of about 26 years, I believe. Little fun fact, um, no two tiger stripes are the same which it's really cool, like snowflakes and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna put this thing right here. This shows a tiger's night vision versus a human's night vision. Um, I don't remember right now if it's the top or the bottom. You'll be able to see on the screen the one you can barely see is a human's night vision. Tigers have amazing night vision and I think that's really cool. <laughs> the next animal, let's see, I have a couple more. Dolphins. Dolphins are cool. So I'm just going to put their habitat thing up right away. It's here. And yeah. So little fun fact about the dolphin, or I guess the species, an orca whale is actually a dolphin. Ooh, I'm going to read you some random 
facts. Yes, this is really cool, I think. I never knew this. Um, dolphins are the only animals to give birth with the baby coming out tail first. The calf would drown if it was the other way. That's pretty interesting. Another one, just a tablespoon of water in a dolphin's lung could drown it, while a human would drown after two tablespoons. It's kind of weird to think that. Though they live in the water, they obviously use their lungs to breathe instead of gills, like most underwater animals. Um, you probably know dolphins have tons and tons and tons of teeth. They actually don't chew their fish at all. They use their teeth for catching the fish, and then they swallow them whole. They don't have jaw muscles for chewing, so that's pretty interesting, too. Um, another really cute fact I found in this book, it says if a dolphin is sick, the others will push it to the surface, like they'll all come together and help push it to the surface so it can breathe. Mm. Precious. So dolphins are very friendly animals, you probably know that. Um, they live together in groups called pods. And they vary in size from just a couple dolphins in a pod to over a thousand. It's a lot of dolphins swimming together. Let's talk about... Polar bears. Yes, polar bears. Okay. So, I'll put a habitat video here. Polar bears are not endangered yet. Um, they are vulnerable though, so they're unfortunately getting there. Um, climate change obviously puts them at risk um, because of their ice melting and also like food loss with all the... I don't really know how that works, guys. I'm not that smart yet. But, um... Yeah, it's sad. Polar bears actually overheat at only 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 degrees Celsius. Um, that's kind of crazy. Um, I cannot imagine how polar bears and zoos feel, which is in the summer obviously more than 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I understand why you very rarely see the polar bears out and playing. They're trying to keep cool underwater and in the shade. It's really sad. Overheating at 50 degrees, it's not that hot at all. Thankfully for when they are in the wild and it's freezing there, they have hollow hairs, black skin, and their blubber. They all help to keep them warm. Quick little facts about polar bears. Their lifespan is about 30 years. Um, height, 7 to 11 feet. Their weight can be 880 to 1500 pounds. Ooh. Their main food source is ringed seals, but they also prey on walruses, belugas, and narwhals. Look at this picture. Um, he's so cute. Oh my gosh. Penguins. Let's talk about penguins. Oh my gosh. Why did I not think of that right away? They are extremely sensitive to the climate change. Um, warming temperatures equals loss of ice and food sources. Like turtles, they do get drowned in fishing nets, which is by catching again. Very, very sad. Um, just makes me, you know, when you think about a penguin getting, like, caught in a net. Oh, that just makes me so upset. Um, let's move on to something nicer about penguins. Um, I'll read a little fact paragraph again about the emperor penguin, which looks like this um, very popular penguin that you probably see the most. Um, most people are familiar with these. Emperor penguins are the only penguins to breed during the harsh Antarctic winter. After laying her single egg, the female goes back to the sea. Her male partner looks after the egg for two months, holding it on his feet beneath a flap of belly skin. All the males huddle together in a group to keep warm during winter storms. The female return to feed the chicks when they hatch. I think that's so cool that the dads watch over the eggs. Dugongs up here, manatees down here. So telling the differences between them, a dugong has the tail I'm trying to think of how to describe it I mean you can obviously see it it goes like yeah like that and a manatee's tail is just it curves like a oh circle oh my gosh rounded that's the word I'm looking for a manatee's tail is rounded a dugong goes like woo well I should stop talking both of them used to be hunted for their meat, skin, and oils. Now many manatees are injured or killed by boat propellers because they often sleep near the surface of the water and are very difficult to see. Um, manatees can stay underwater for 15 minutes before coming up to breathe. The dugong can only stay underwater for one minute, so they come up to breathe quite often. So those are most of the animals I wanted to talk about. Um, the last one I will talk about is the slow loris, the whole situation with them. Um, 
I am going to get all this information from International Animal Rescue. They do such amazing work with saving slow lorises and raising money to raise awareness for them. And I will link them in the description below. Um, so yeah, um, this might be kind of long. I'm just going to read basically the whole story. I'm going to put some pictures here. They're kind of sad, but I mean, this could be kind of disturbing, I guess, but it's what's going on right now. So, thousands of slow lorises are poached from the wild to be illegally sold on the street or in animal markets. Often whole families of slow lorises living in the wild will be captured for the pet trade. Before a slow loris is sold as a pet, its teeth are cut out using nail clippers, wire cutters, or pliers with no anesthetic. This is to make them easy to handle and to protect humans from their potentially deadly venomous bite. Maybe if you weren't illegally training them, they wouldn't bite you. Thanks. Okay. This is an incredibly painful procedure that often results in infection or death through blood loss. Lorises are then transported, hidden away in dark, overcrowded, and poorly ventilated containers. The stress of this transport results in a morality rate between 30% and 90%. Often, captured lorises are found in crates alongside the bodies of other lorises that have died. That whole little process is so disturbing. Let's do some fun facts about them. So you guys know what slow lorises really are and hopefully we'll raise awareness, talk about it with people and make people aware of what is happening with them. It is nocturnal, it has forward facing eyes and human like hands with an opposable thumb. So the name loris in Dutch actually means clown which probably comes from the facial features that help to define the species. The slow loris are among the rarest primates on earth. So although slow lorises are seen as slow movers, they frequently race walk and can move up to 8 kilometers. They frequently race walk and can move up to 8 kilometers per night. Equally, they are able to remain totally still for hours on end if required. This one surprised me. It says their movement looks similar to that of a snake due to their twisting movement caused by having several more vertebrae in their spine than other primates. Okay, so I hope you guys liked this video. It would really help if you guys commented below and told me, wow, this was really boring, you talk too much, or maybe you liked it and you want to see more like this, hopefully. Um, obviously, I would love it if you guys would subscribe, but if I could have you do one thing today, it would be to sign the pledge for the slow lorises. Oh, guys, this would literally take you like a minute maybe. You literally, here, I'll put it on the screen. Um, it says, I pledge not to support and encourage the illegal pet trade in slow lorises. I will not share or like any video that shows a slow loris being kept as a pet. Where possible, I will comment directing the people to the International Animal Rescue Slow Loris Rescue Information page to help expose the truth and end the suffering. All you have to do is put your name and email and I think that's really cool. And check out this website for the International Animal Rescue, saving animals from suffering around the world. I think this is an amazing website. A lot you can do on it. Yeah, so please sign that pledge. Name and email, that's it. Take you a minute. Um, it would mean a lot. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, as I said, maybe subscribe and like. But, um, yeah. I will see you guys next Saturday with another video. Bye! <laughs>